We are going to be making some abstract art like Sonia Delaunay and we're going to be starting out with some geometric shapes and to help us do that we're going to use some templates. I've got a nice collection of lids that I found around the room. I've got some squares, a ruler, and a compass. If you want to try using one of these compasses, this is going to be the center. You're going to put pressure on the middle part and then you are going to carefully move the pencil around the outside edge. That's how you use that. The only trick is, well, I thought it would be more fun if we used some colored pencils. So if you want to switch this compass out with a colored pencil, you can. And I'm just going to take these shapes and start arranging them and tracing them in different colors and see what I can come up with. You don't always have to trace the entire shape. For example, uh, let's say I want to add this onto the front, but I want to have the top straight across. I could use my ruler for that. Or let's say I want to have a shape that is just peeking out from behind here. I can just trace that other half that would be sticking out from behind. So I'm going to let you guys decide on what kind of colors you want to use. Just have fun with it and um, yeah, we'll see what happens. One last thing for our colored pencils, if they need to be sharpened like this one does, hold it over your pencil bin, hold it still, and twist your sharpener. Okay, so for this lesson, remember our theme this quarter is contrast. And it's gonna be really boring if I keep going the way I'm going because I have a circle, um, kind of a, another, I don't know what the shape is, and then a square, and these are all pretty much the same size. So I'm not getting a lot of contrast except when I add this little guy in there in my size of my shapes. So I want to make sure as I'm adding on to this that things are smaller and larger and I can use my ruler to make things larger. But it's going to get really boring if everything in my composition is the same size. So make sure you guys are adding contrast through size. Let's say, what if you kind of want to hand draw a shape that isn't traced? Can you do that? Absolutely. I'm going to go for that with this side. I want to do kind of a, a scallop shape that's hand drawn looking. your name to your artwork, you can put it on the front or the back. I've got a variety of spaces. I've got small spaces, larger spaces. I made sure that my background wasn't huge behind anything. So when I first, I had a point where I had all these shapes in, but this line and these lines weren't there. Th that would have made this one really big background shape. So everything's kind of broken up into smaller, more manageable shapes. And you guys have the opportunity to color that in. And you can use colored pencils, oil pastels, and these beautiful new watercolors. So I want to review just a little bit about watercolor. The one super important ingredient that we need to add is some water to your brush. So if it hasn't been used yet, if your color hasn't been used yet, you're gonna get it in some water, roll it around there. Look at this has this cool little thing for your brush, I think, to keep it kind of like, to dab it so that you don't get too much water on there. 
and then you can start coloring in. And depending on your space, you could use a smaller or a larger brush. I wouldn't want to use this tiny brush to color this in. I would want to go for the bigger brush. But once I'm done coloring this, I'm of course going to wash my brush by giving him a nice relaxing bath in the water. La -dee -da -dee -da. And then dry him off on the mat. Well, you know what, with watercolor, we really just can wipe it on the lip. You don't have to dry it off too much because you want your brush a little bit wet. And then notice here, if you want to lighten the color, you can just do a quick dip in the water to add a little more water and spread it down and that will start to lighten the color. And then let's say I finish coloring this outline of orange in and I want to add a watercolor in here. I would suggest waiting for this outside area to dry and working on another portion of your artwork. That way when you go to, to paint inside, it doesn't bleed unless that's the effect you're looking for. So that was really dark. So I just got a dip of water and I can spread that paint around. You really don't need that much paint. Your watercolor wants to be translucent. That means you can see through it. So very similarly to using paint, you can mix colors with oil pastels. And if you notice on those ones, I took a darker or lighter color and went over one of the colors to kind of mix those two middle ones. You can also add contrast by coloring some portion of the same color darker and lighter, like in the green shape on the right that I just did, the darker green shape. And we talked earlier about contrast through the uh, size of our shapes, and you can also add contrast through color on this project, not just like in the projects we've done before with complementary colors, you can use any colors. But if you're looking at darker and lighter shades of colors, that will add contrast. If you pick all pastels, that will have low contrast. And if you choose some darker, brighter colors and some lighter colors, then you will have more high contrast. You can also give contrast by changing oil pastels, watercolor, and color pencil. That will add some texture that will really make things a little bit more interesting on your project. And then last but not least, you can add contrast by filling some of the shapes in solid and some of the shapes in not quite so solid, like the little lines that I have through the pink triangle or the gray stripe or the black stripe or in this circle right here. And if you wanna keep a little paper under your hand, you can keep your hand from smudging the oil pastels.